It's good to see you today. I hope everything is going well. Today's Thursday, January 20th. Our reading today is Job chapters 5 through 7. And to look at the chapters, chapter 5 is actually halfway through the first uh, speech made by Job's friend Eliphaz. And we back up and we can see that a little bit better. But as, as Eliphaz started speaking in yesterday's reading, and I hope you read that to, to catch the first part of what Eliphaz says, but then in chapter 5, he goes on and he, he keeps talking. And basically what he's saying is that, um, and to look at it and more specifically, look at verse 17. Behold, happy is the man whom God corrects. Therefore, do not despise the chastening of the Almighty. He bruises, he binds up, he wounds, but his his hands make whole. We're going to come back and we're going to look more specifically at this at this passage, but what Eliphaz is saying is God has done this and Job, obviously you've done something to 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 be deserving of this. Is Eliphaz's argument. Then in chapter 6, Job answers and he is continuing to somewhat to, to deplore the day of his birth. And just to, to basically, and, and I don't want to come down too hard on Job myself, because he is suffering horribly. But as he, as he goes through and speaks about it, and he is just loathing his life. He has no hope, he speaks about. And there in verse 11, What is my end that I should prolong my life? And frankly, he's, he's wanting to die, is what it looks like. And verse 26, Do you intend to rebuke my words? The speeches of a desperate one which are as wind, as he, as he answers Eliphaz. But he, he's, he says, you'll now let there be no injustice. Yes, concede my righteousness still stands. He, what, what he's wanting is he's wanting them to tell him basically what he's done wrong. Verse 7, he's recognizing, just as the title says, and it's, he is in a hard place. Needless to say. And he speaks about some of the analogies that he uses. You know, he goes to bed, but he just tosses and turns all night. Verse 13 and 14, My bed will comfort me, my couch will ease my complaint. But then he says, But then you scare me with dreams and terrify me with, with visions, so that my soul chooses strangling and death rather than my body. I loathe my life. I would not live forever. Let me alone, for my days are but a breath. But as he as he speaks this way, and let's let's back up to chapter five, because I want to I want to look more closely, like closely, like I said, at that passage as Eliphaz is speaking to him. And, and let's just let's just think about a few things. One is, is that true? Verse 17. Behold, happy is the man whom God corrects. That verse, if it's not a direct quotation, it's real close to it, is quoted in, it's found in Hebrews. Do not despise the chastening of the Lord, for the Lord chastens those whom he loves. Verse 17. Do not despise the chastening of the Almighty. He bruises, for he bruises, but he binds up. He wounds, but his hands make whole. He shall deliver you in six troubles. Yes, in seven no evil shall touch you. My point is simply this. That's all true. That's all true. That yes, indeed, happy is the man whom God corrects. We might think about happiness. It's like the peace that we have. When Jesus is talking to the disciples and he says, My peace I give to you, he says, It's not like the world gives it, but it is peace. But it's a different kind of peace. And he says, In the world you will have troubles. Well, happiness is, is the same way. 
this is this is not the the frivolous sort of happiness that the world may deem as being happy but it is rejoicing in the lord it, it is a a godly kind of happiness and those things conceptually speaking that eliphaz says there that it is absolutely true in a sense in in a sense but this is this is the problem eliphaz is assuming that god has done this so conceptually speaking yes it's true but eliphaz is assuming that god has done this and that is a bad assumption and it's it's an assumption that is very often made it was made in jesus's time and it's still made in our time whenever there's there's a disaster it's very tempting to say oh well god's done that god is punishing those people because obviously they've done something when jesus in jesus's ministry for those three years as he went about doing good as scripture says you know they they came to the man i believe it was the one who was blind and the disciples say or those with him said well who sinned this man or his parents they assumed that god had done this and jesus says no but this is for the glo this is for the glory of god but they thought the man had been sinning and we'll come back to that and they thought god had punished that man either because of something he had done or that god had punished him for something his parents had done and the Lord says, no, that's not what this is. You don't understand. Now, sometimes, and my point is, it's an assumption. You don't know. We don't know. Eliphaz here, he doesn't know. He no more knew what had happened behind the curtain in chapters 1 and 2. He no more knew what had happened then Job knew what had happened. The only reason we know what happened is because it's recorded in Scripture. If chapters 1 and 2 were not recorded, we wouldn't know what happened. We would probably assume the same thing Eliphaz is assuming. Oh, obviously Job's done something horrible and God is punishing, for him. punishing, punishing, for him. punishing him for it. If I can spit it out and the answer is no, that's not what's happening. Remember, another account to look at my notes when Jesus talks about the Tower of Siloam and they there were some who came and asked him about the those who were killed by Pilate the Galileans who's when it talks about the the mingling of the blood Pilate had killed a number of Galileans and disasters happen don't assume that God is behind it don't assume you know the workings of God. If it's not ex now, if it's explicitly laid out, if it's if it's revealed, then it's revealed, and you recognize how God has worked. But if it has not been revealed, be real careful about making assumptions about what God does or does not do. Eliphaz is assuming what he says conceptually is right. Happy is the man whom God corrects. Conceptually, he's right, but he's assuming that God is correcting Job, that God had corrected Job, and that God was doing all this in order to correct Job. When in fact, what God says to the devil is, Have you considered my servant Job? There is none like him on the face of the earth. You might, We might consider, when he says there's none like him, uh, Eliphaz would be included in that. Who is more blameless and upright? on the face of the earth. According to chapter 1, is it Job or Eliphaz? It's Job. Eliphaz is assuming about God. It's got to be real careful. But also, Eliphaz is assuming about Job. He's assuming that Job has sinned. And we better be real careful about those sort of assumptions too. And that sometimes... Sometimes men's sins are clearly evident, but other times the Lord is going to have to sort it out. Scripture talks about it. You're going to have to sort it out at judgment. Sometimes people accuse us, and sometimes we may accuse people. 
And it's evil surmising is what it is. And we may hear just a little, a little fragment. And we may make all sorts of leaps in our imaginations and our accusations, assuming that they've sinned. And we need to be real careful. Because it, it is it is seeds of dis it is seeds of division is what it is. Those who sow discord among brethren. Um, Eliphaz, he's assuming Job has done this. He's assuming God has done this. And while the things he says are conceptually true, what's actual what's actually happening? Because what he says is conceptually true, but he's not applying the truth correctly. And that's what we have to do. We have to apply the truth correctly. The law is good, Scripture says. The law is good if one uses it lawfully. When Paul is speaking to Timothy, he talks about rightly dividing the word. The word has to be rightly divided. It has to be used correctly. Scripture can be abused. People can quote Scripture, and it, while it conceptually may be correct, it's being misapplied and used wrongfully. The devil quoted Scripture. Now, did that make the devil right? No, obviously not. Obviously not. He was twisting it, and that's what the devil. That's what the devil does, and. And sometimes we do the same thing. And when we do that, when we twist Scripture and we start making evil, when we evilly surmise and we start making assumptions, we're doing the devil's bidding. Even though we may know some, we may know something is right conceptually, like Eliphaz. And, and I hope you understand what I mean by that. But we may be misapplying it. And we may not know all the details, all the things that are happening. And that's the situation Eliphaz finds himself in. And frankly, that's also the situation Job finds himself in. This is a journey of discovery for Job. He doesn't understand why these things are happening. So a lot of the things that Job is saying, he he's trying to come to grips with it himself, and he's trying to understand why this is happening. He doesn't realize that the Lord says that it's the Lord who says to the devil, have you considered my servant Job? But anyway, hope this brief consideration of God's word has been helpful for you. Appreciate you joining us today, and I hope you have a good day. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for being with us today.